Good afternoon, I'm the Modern Warfare Historian and today we will talk about the V2 rocket. Last time we discussed on how it was developed, today we will learn how it was used. Now let's get started. In the last days of November 1943, the 65th Army Corps ZBV was formed under General de Artillerie ZV Eric Heinemann and was responsible for operational use of the V2. Three battalions were formed, Artillery Abteilung 836, Artillery Abteilung 485 and Artillery Abteilung 962, all three being motorized. Combat operations started in September 1944, when training battery 444 was deployed. On the 2nd of September 1944, the SS Werfer Abteilung 500 was formed and by October, SS Lieutenant General Hans Kammler took control. He formed Group South with Artillery Abteilung 836 in Merzig and Group North with Artillery Abteilung 485 and Battery 444 at Burgsteinfurt and The Hague. The offensive began on the 7th with two launches towards Paris that failed. Why Paris? Because it had just been liberated 15 days earlier and Hitler wanted revenge. On the following day, a single launch against Paris caused modest damage. At 17 to 7 pm, two V2s were launched against the UK. One hit Stavely Road, Chiswick in West London, killing two civilians and a soldier, and the other hit Epping with no casualties. At first, the British government blamed the explosion as a gas accident. However, the Germans announced the V2 on the 8th of November. On the 10th, Winston Churchill informed the Parliament. Around 3,172 V2s were fired. Belgium was hit 1,664 times. Antwerp was hit 1,610 times. Liege 27, Hasselt 13, Tournai 9. Mons 3 and Diest 2. The UK was hit 1402 times, London 1358, Norwich 43 and Ipswich once. France was hit 76 times, Lille 25, Paris 22, Turcoin 19, Arras 6 and Cambrai 4. The Netherlands were hit 19 times, all at Maastricht. German itself was hit 11 times, more on that later. Around 2,754 civilians were killed in London, with 6,523 wounded. At first, one may think that around two people were being killed per each rocket. However, this underestimation comes because many rockets exploded harmlessly. On the 25th of November 1944, a V2 hitting southeastern London killed 160 and 108 seriously injured. Antwerp suffered 1,736 deaths and 4,500 injured, with 590 direct hits. On the 16th of December 1944, the Rex Cinema was hit. 1,100 people were inside. 567 were killed, including 296 soldiers, 291 injured, and 11 buildings were destroyed. Following the attack, the town council closed all public performances venues and limited congregation at any one location to 50 people. After the US captured the Ludendorff Bridge in Remagen, Germany, it was decided that it had to blow up. On the 17th of March, 11 V2s were launched. One landed in Cologne, 64 kilometers south of the target while one missed the bridge by 270 meters. Remagen itself was hit and at least six US soldiers were hit. This was the first and last tactical use of a V2. The last two V2s exploded on the 27th of March, 1945. A single V2 explosion would create a 20 meters wide, eight meters deep crater, ejecting around 3,000 tons of materials. In total, around 9,000 people were killed by the V2 attacks. When a faction brings something new to the table, the enemy faction always tries to catch up and surpass. 
the V2 trajectory made it almost immune to ground fire and fighters, as it travelled on an almost vertical path at three times the speed of sound. Earlier on, it was believed that it had radio guidance. Jamming efforts failed, and in December 1944, these efforts were abandoned. Interestingly, the Germans started employing radio guidance at the end of the war. Anti-aircraft walls of fire were proposed, but calculations suggested that 320,000 shells were needed for each rocket. 2% were expected to fall back, and this is around 90 tons of rounds, which will cause more damage than V2 itself. The concept was obviously rejected. General Frederick Alfred Pyle, commander of Anti-Aircraft Command, who proposed what we just talked about, returned with a 150 shell per rocket proposal. He planned to deploy a large amount of AA guns in Hyde Park, however no tracking technique was available. Pyle's team calculated that with 2,000 rounds, there was a 1 in 60 chance of shooting it down. Plans for a test began, but Montgomery forces captured the V2 launching zones. With Germany being unable to hit England, the PAL system was planned to move to Antwerp, but the war ended before anything could be done. Another tactic was to destroy the launch infrastructure that delayed operation by a lot, but was expensive in resources and in casualties. So the British started to simply create false statements, saying that the rockets were landing north of London. So the Germans adjusted the aim and actually started to hit Kent, southeast of London, creating less deaths. Still, the British continued the bombing efforts. On the 3rd of March, a large bomber formation aimed to destroy V2s and launching equipment in the Hag missed the target and killed 511 Dutch civilians. Rockets are expensive and V2 is no exception. The V1 and V2 programs combined costed around 40 US billions in 2015 values. That's 50% more than the Manhattan Project. Around 6,000 were built at around 2.37 million pounds each in 2011 value. The V2 used a third of alcohol production, 30 tons of potatoes when food was scarce. Some warheads, due to the lack of explosive, had concrete, some even just propaganda photos of German civilians killed by Allied bombers. The V2 costed more, both in resources and work hours, than the V1, but V1 was interceptable. Instead, the 6000 V2 Germany could have probably built 6 to 8000 planes, that obviously still needed fuel and crews, something that Germany lacked at the end of the war. As for now, it seems that it was a waste of time and resources, but in the next episode we look at the legacy of it. Thank you for watching, and remember to always avoid big crowds in times of crisis.